What's up folks, for this review I'm bringing you a game that launched under my nose and one image of it sold me. Obey Me is an isometric hack and slash game that has some obvious influence from the Devil May Cry series, which is a damn good series and luckily Obey has enough differences to stand on its own two feet proudly. Now I'm a sucker for isometric games, perhaps my favorite genre of all time. Something about it's just gamey as hell if that makes sense. Either way, Obey Me has a price tag of $20. Is it worth it? Well I'm about to tell you. My name is Tanner and this is For Your Money. Obey Me takes a lot of themes from Devil May Cry and applies it to the story. Mainly DMC, you know, before Ninja Theory sold out for Bleeding Edge. Obey Me is about a girl named Vanessa who is lower than the lesser demon and her talking dog Monty. They are called upon by their boss Amon, who is a higher demon looking over the mortal world, to do a few missions for him. While Vanessa doesn't think much of it, Monty finds it's weird Amon has never asked him to do anything, but suddenly now he's asking you guys to do a lot. Turns out Amon has a plan and you're somehow at the center of it. For better or for worse, that's for you to find out and me not to spoil. Obey Me has a fascinating story and at first, I wasn't gripped, I'm gonna be honest. I thought, here we go again, another story of someone rising from the rubble to be a badass. I was wrong. Vanessa and Monty were always badasses. They were just underrated until Amon's plan came foreseeable. The story picks up after the first few chapters, but it's not all about the straightforward, in-your-face story. A lot of what's interesting is picked up in conversations between Monty and V. Who Monty was and how he got to be where he is, and the same goes for Vanessa. Overall, Obey Me has an adequate story filled with vengeance, twists, and interesting characters. It's a small investment of 5-6 to six hours, and honestly, that's not bad for $20. As for the gameplay, Obey Me, as I said earlier, is an isometric hack and slash game with a focus on combos. There aren't a lot of overwhelming combos like you'll find in a DMC game, but a sufficient amount to make Vanessa a force to be reckoned with. For starters, you have access to four weapons, each having their own unique combos which are purchased in the menu by Soul Cores. You get those by finding crystals around the map. Same with health. Now, I never had a weapon of choice, and not because I didn't like the loadout they gave us, but because every weapon in this game is good for certain situations. I promise you every weapon in this game will be used for more than one fight. You don't want to fight the robotic enemies with your fists, because they'll just dash out of the way, whereas you can use the hammer to cause them to flinch, giving you more time to attack. With that being said, Obey Me is difficult. I chose the normal difficulty, but some of these battles are going to test your skills, and if you aren't prepared, then you are going to die. If you're familiar with dungeon crawler style games like Diablo or Wilson for example, you know that there are a tonnage of enemies on screen at a time. This game is no exception, enemies spinning at you while others charge attacking you, maybe one of them's trying to trap you with their tongue. It is chaos on screen and not the bad kind either, this is the gaming I fucking live for. Not enough chaos for you? Well let's bring in another genre for you. Bullet Hell. This game has a slight bullet hell section during a boss fight where you're not only fighting the boss, you're fighting minor enemies, dodging electric orbs, lasers, square bullets, need I go on? A couple points I bring to the table here are, be prepared for anything and with the boss battles every single one of them is different. They aren't all just okay go attack them. Some require a few steps and others might trap Monty so he can't attack but worse you can't use your special ability without him. Every boss is going to have you changing it up and that's how it should be. Now as I mentioned without Monty you can't use your special. So besides a health bar, all enemies have a blue bar below their health, bosses included. Once that is full, you use Monty's attack and it will give you spirit dust. And this will allow you to go into fusion mode where you and Monty become one and your attacks do a stupid amount of damage. Save this shit for the bosses, you're gonna need it. Now platforming isn't exactly a big part in games like these unless we're talking about Temple of Osiris, but we're not. This game has no jump button, but still makes the environment your enemy by adding spike traps such as floor panels and plants that have spikes on them. They also have flames and lasers and saws. These are all dodged by warping. You can run past them, yeah, but I mean, just utilize the warp. It makes you feel like a badass. Now these aren't anything special, but they get the job done, and it's fun. You'll have whole hallways and alleyways filled with these traps, so it is a big part of the gameplay. And if you ask me, it's the simplicities like this that make me enjoy these kind of games. Another simple idea is couch co-op. One person can play as V while someone else plays as Monty. I never did any co-op, but having the ability was a great implement. I like having these options even if I don't use all of them. My one complaint about this gameplay is the fact there is no map. This game is rather straightforward, I'll give it that. Only areas off the beaten path are collectibles, but still, in a game like this I always enjoy having a map to see the area I'm in. And I'm not asking for a full uncovered map of the area, just give me something like Diablo where I can uncover it. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, the more features the better. Even if only 1% of gamers utilize them, I still love features. How did this game catch my attention? 
the isometric camera. Duh. Obey Me has some very cartoon-like in-game graphics. Not like Borderlands, but a slight effect to make it tasteful. Then they switch it up when it comes to the cutscenes, giving it a graphic novel feel. It's a good combo that goes hand in hand. As for the comic graphics, that's really what brings out the enemy's design. I was in awe by the design of the creatures. Depending on the location of the mission, the enemies differ in design. In the slums, you have Corrupted, who look like they were the test subjects for Fizco, whereas if you're beneath the city, you're fighting angelic robots that have a holy glow about them. The character designs are nothing south of enthralling. As for sound, I loved it. This game has a cheesy dialogue and it embraces it. V always mentions how she's very sarcastic and the game never puts that down. Whereas some games would mention it and then it's never brought up again. As for the soundtrack, it's retro mixed with some heavy guitar parts and as people know, I'm a sucker for heavy guitars. But add some retro sounds in there and now we're cooking with fucking fire. Now it also features some not angelic, uh, hellish, yeah that, we'll go with that hellish choir singing close to high lung but not quite as good so here are some clips of the overall design for you guys to judge yourself We could talk about the weather. Obey Me is one hell of a game. I never had bugs. Anything that resembled a bug, they already had a safety measure to ensure it wasn't, such as an enemy being stuck would just instantly die. Only issue I had was no map, and I'm fine with there being no map seeing they put some time into this game. Obey Me was priced at $20, and I think it's worth the $20 price tag. It's a good and polished game with a hell of a design and great combat, and it was a phenomenal gaming experience. It's not a pinnacle of isometric games, but it's one to have in the collection, no doubt. That's all folks, if you enjoyed this watch, why not subscribe? If it wasn't up to par, then hit that thumbs down. Till next time, fellas.